in the world there's a phrase we like to say it's called get real or can I get real well I'd like to ask you to get real to consider something that I believe is true that's universal for all human beings that each and every one of us has a that universal desire or need it's beyond a want it's an absolute need we are made with this need by our God and Creator Jesus and and he's the only one who can fulfill that need we all have this need to be loved perfectly I'm gonna go kind of slow even though I want this to be a short message because I really want you to think about this really consider this some of you know exactly what I'm talking about some of you maybe not so much because things can happen in our lives and we can convince ourselves that we have found love and acceptance in the world from a person from uh, fulfilling certain tasks and goals that we have uh, designed for ourselves. You know, I'll do these things and I'll accomplish these things and therefore I'll have fulfillment because I, I've accomplished these things or I've met this person or persons or, or a group of people or I've joined this organization. Others of us have tried and tried and tried and tried and found out and just kind of resign ourselves to, well, I know I need it. I never seem to stop needing it, but I'll never get it. So we resign ourselves to never getting it. It's there, but it's not gonna happen. And what I want you to consider is those two things that yes, you do need it. You really do need it. Every single one of us needs it. There's no exception. We were designed to have a great need a great need for a great love, a perfect love, a perfect acceptance. That love, that God who gives you that perfect love and acceptance is offering it to you for free. And he's offering it to you in order for you to have purpose and meaning in your life. And I want to um, go into the scriptures here to show this because I know that sometimes because I'm coming out of religion, I can, my wife and I might to some of you sound like we're negative. It's because of what we realized we learned or more to the point did not learn while we were in religion all those years. And we still struggle with this because we don't understand why we were never taught this. And we can understand and accept that everyone was fooled. Everyone was lied to and they just keep repeating the lies. Keep repeating the big lie, like a previous message I have. People do that, I understand it, I repeated it. I, I wasn't trying to be mean by repeating those things, but now that I know the truth, I want people to hear about the truth. And and there is this lie about that great love your God has for you, that it's not so perfect. That his acceptance for you comes with some requirements. His purpose for you, you know, you might need some guidance. You might need some holy person to tell you what your purpose is and what your meaning is. You might need to find the right book or the right, the right wise friend or leader, counselor, pastor, preacher, priest, whatever. And the message of God that we have found out is that he is accessible to every single one of us. It's just that because of all this religion, all these blocks, he gives what's called a, a, a ministry of reconciliation to those who know about him. So it's, this is what I want to talk about real quick is about that ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation is something that those who know they are reconciled to God are sort of speak tasked with. It's not something as an obligation. It's just something you feel compelled to do once you've been made free in your God by your God, your truth, your savior, your Lord, your master, your friend, your everything, your Jesus. You wanna share that with people. So that's what I'm doing here. So I wanna share a scripture here. It's in the NLT, the New Living Translation, 2 Corinthians chapter five, starting in verse 17. Paul says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him 
For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. You notice in the end of both of those last two sentences, or last two verses, this task of reconciling people to him, no longer counting sins, he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. That's why we love to share it. It's a wonderful message. Your God loves you. Your God came here. He was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. How did he do that? He died. He proved his love for you. While we were yet sinners, God showed his love to us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That says two things. It says who God is. It says who Christ is. Christ is God. God did not send someone. God came and he did that for you. You don't commend your love towards someone by killing someone else. God gave himself for you. He loves you. He always has and he always will. That is the ministry of reconciliation that we have been given who now know he loves you. So I'm not fulfilling that ministry, but I'm participating in it with others that are out there telling you this. You are reconciled to God. You have been forgiven totally. You are not saved through that reconciliation. You're not saved through that forgiveness of sins, but it's the offering that is now a free gift to you. And if you accept it and you believe in your God, you can be made alive again. You can be alive, just as alive as Adam was when he breathed the spirit of life in his nostrils. You can receive the life of Christ into you through faith that is in him, completely in him and only in him. That is your reconciliation. It is 100% the work of God. It is not something that you can screw up by not accomplishing or performing right. It's only your belief, your faith. That is your so-called half or part of the deal. And that is not a work. That is just something you either trust in or you don't. So trust in that. Believe in that. Be reconciled. That's what Paul said. Be reconciled. He didn't say get reconciled. He didn't say accomplish these tasks to get reconciled. He didn't say obey these rules, laws, and orders. Join this denomination. Pay these tithes and offerings. Accomplish this service. Uh, youth. It's just... Be reconciled. Accept what your God did for you. And accept that love, that perfect love and acceptance he offers to you. What you need. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Acknowledge that in your heart. You need it. And no matter what perfect relationship or job or combination of all the above and more you have going on in your life, without the love of your God, there's something missing. There's something missing. You know that you have failed. You're a sinner. We've all sinned. You might even be in a church building and you still have these feelings and you still feel empty, but you don't feel alone because everyone else around you is doing the same thing. But you're kind of like all alone together if you don't have God. God loves you. You're his child. And that's as simple as I can make it. He did everything to fix it. He didn't ask you for permission. He didn't ask for your input. This is just a surrender. This is not an intellectual in negotiation you enter into with him to see which works better for you this or that the world or jesus no it's just jesus gave you everything he gave you himself he offers it to you you believe it you receive his spirit and you live forever with him and begin the greatest life you've ever had there is no life like living with god living with your god every day day by day reconciled to him forever never to fall away never to fear to know always that he accepts you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Your God, that perfect God, that perfect one and only Jesus who came here to save you, loves you. Believe that and be reconciled so that then you can share it with others. That ministry, that wonderful ministry of salvation, of reconciliation, of telling people about their great God and Savior, Jesus, who loves them and did it all. In Jesus' name, amen.